The recent diplomatic summit between Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso's top officials marks a significant advancement in their collaborative efforts. They intend to build a more robust and formidable entity, positioning themselves as a unified force with far-reaching implications for regional security and international relations. This development raises the stakes for any potential invader, as any aggression against one of the three nations would result in a collective response from all three, strengthening their defense and deterrence capabilities. This emerging alliance is a proactive step toward asserting regional sovereignty and autonomy. These African nations hope to strengthen their collective strength, voice, and bargaining power on the global stage by forming a more cohesive and interconnected entity. This strategic alignment not only promotes mutual defense, but also represents a unified approach to addressing common challenges, indicating a shift in the region's power dynamics. Through the alliance of Sahel states, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso are making significant strides toward a unified front, indicating a significant shift in regional dynamics. This alliance, formed in response to recent events and initially conceived as a defense pact, has evolved beyond military cooperation into an economic and political union. Foreign ministers from these countries strategically outlined the coalition's institutional structure at a pivotal meeting in Bamako. Their efforts now go beyond military cooperation, with the goal of establishing strong economic ties, joint investment initiatives, joint energy projects, and the establishment of an investment bank. This alliance arose as a strategic response to these countries' suspension from the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS, as a result of political shifts favoring closer alignment with Russia and diverging from Western influence. Furthermore, amid strained relations with France and the West, announcements of withdrawal from the G5 Sahel Force, which was initially established with French support to combat terrorism, have been made. This series of actions reflects a proactive realignment of these countries' geopolitical stances, as well as a concerted effort to forge a stronger collective identity and influence in the region. Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali's military leaders have accused France of wielding undue influence, prompting joint statements from Burkina and Niger declaring their withdrawal from the G5 Sahel, including the joint force. They cited the G5 Sahel's failure to meet objectives and prioritize member countries' security and development needs, claiming that current participation was incompatible with their desire for independence and dignity. Their complaints included the organization's potential preference for foreign interests over the welfare and sovereignty of their people. Concurrently, Niger authorized Mali and Burkina Faso armed forces to enter its territory in the event of an attack. In a related meeting, the foreign ministers of Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso reaffirmed their commitment to mutual support in the face of potential ECOWS conflicts. Furthermore, because Niger is still subject to ECODGA's economic sanctions, legal proceedings initiated by Niger to challenge these sanctions have been postponed. In the context of ECODGA's dissatisfaction, the formalization of the Alliance of Sahel States appears to be an alternative to ECODGA's. The recent proposal for a confederation by the military-led governments of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger is a significant step forward in their larger initiative to unite as West African neighbors within a federation. Following the ouster of elected President Mohamed Bazoum in July, Mali and Burkina Faso, both under military rule since 2020 and 2022, respectively, offered their support to Niger's military rulers. The Alliance of Sahel States, formed through cooperative efforts, seeks to strengthen economic ties and provide mutual defense assistance if any member's sovereignty or territory is threatened. Foreign ministers highlighted the potential for peace, diplomatic strength, and economic growth within this strengthened political alliance following a two-day meeting in Mali's capital, Bamako. The ministers proposed forming a confederation of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, with the goal of merging the three countries into a single entity, with each serving as a federating unit. These recommendations will be made to the heads of state. Military regimes have formed close ties as they deal with calls for civilian rule and persistent jihadist threats. 
Furthermore, these countries' economy and finance ministers previously proposed establishing a stabilization fund, an investment bank, and a committee to study economic and monetary union. The proposed Confederation of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger offers significant political, security, and economic benefits, with the potential to reshape power dynamics and strengthen their collective influence on regional and global platforms. Politically, the Confederation promises strengthened ties, stability, and unified action in addressing common challenges such as counterterrorism and promoting peace throughout the Sahel region. A confederation of Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso would have significant diplomatic, security, and economic benefits. Unified influence in regional and global negotiations would secure favorable trade agreements and aid packages, while shared institutions could streamline decision-making processes. A confederation could strengthen regional defense against cross-border threats by encouraging joint security operations and intelligence sharing. This would reduce the need for external military intervention while increasing regional autonomy. Economically, this unified entity could create an integrated market, increasing trade and investment while allocating pooled resources to infrastructure development and collaborative resource management. In terms of global influence, the Confederation would emerge as a more powerful regional player, attracting global recognition and investment. The Alliance of Sahel States, which includes Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, is considering the introduction of a unified currency, tentatively known as the ECO, to replace the CFA franc. However, details about its name and mechanism have yet to be finalized, though experts believe it could manifest as the proposed ECO currency by ECOS. These Sahel states want to resurrect a dormant currency and integrate it into their economies. The new currency will be introduced gradually, beginning with the establishment of a common central bank and the alignment of economic policies among participating countries. There are numerous potential benefits to adopting a single currency within the Sahel states. It has the potential to reduce currency exchange costs, promote trade, and improve economic efficiency. This unified currency has the potential to promote greater regional integration, resulting in economic growth, job creation, and higher living standards for citizens. Furthermore, a single currency could bring monetary stability by reducing uncertainties associated with exchange rate fluctuations and decreasing reliance on foreign currencies, allowing for greater control over monetary policies. However, this effort to create a new currency is taking place against the backdrop of the CFA franc's contentious history and France's historical financial influence in African nations. The CFA franc, which originated in France in 1945, aimed to secure access to raw materials from colonies while also protecting France's monetary interests against the UK's sterling area. Despite 14 African nations' independence, the CFA franc persists as an archaic currency tied to France. The CFA franc, which operates in three regions, each with its own version, ensures France's guarantees of convertibility, fixed parity, and control over foreign exchange reserves. This link to the French economy, however, limits these countries' economic development by limiting liquidity, affecting exports, and limiting central banks' interventions to combat inflation. France benefits greatly because it retains a stronghold on these economies, controlling foreign currency reserves, and providing preferential access to local markets, resource exploitation, and profit repatriation without currency concerns. This arrangement ultimately benefits France while limiting the economic autonomy of these African countries. France's dominance over the CFA franc gives it clout in the currency world, leaving nations without true monetary sovereignty. The fixed parity of the CFA franc has been at the discretion of Paris since its inception, with its value shifting multiple times. France unilaterally devalued the CFA franc by 50% in 1994, significantly reducing purchasing power, inflating import costs, and escalating prices, forcing central banks to prioritize fighting inflation over economic development. Defenders of the CFA franc claim stability, but it hasn't fostered significant exchanges within the 14-country zone, amounting to only 10-15% to compared to 60% in the Eurozone. 
Despite the currency's unpopularity among younger generations, African leaders have historically supported it. Icons critical of the CFA franc, such as Burkina Faso's Thomas Sankara and Mali's Manabu Kita, were assassinated and replaced by leaders aligned with France. Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, on the other hand, are now proposing a new single African currency, recognizing that the suspension of the CFA franc is necessary for progress. The adoption of a single currency within the Alliance of Sahel States, which includes Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, promises numerous benefits. This action promotes economic integration by lowering transaction costs and encouraging cross-border trade, thereby stimulating economic activity and lowering prices for goods and services. It strengthens economic ties, attracts more investment, and diversifies economies away from reliance on a few commodities. By adopting a unified currency, these countries decouple themselves from external currencies such as the euro, gaining control over their monetary policies and bolstering economic sovereignty. This shift strengthens their collective voice in international affairs, increasing negotiating power and attracting international attention and partnerships. Furthermore, these countries will no longer be required to deposit 50% of their reserves in French banks, allowing them to exercise greater control and invest in their development and infrastructure. Aside from currency unification, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso are considering establishing a joint airline. This proposal is consistent with their focus on economic development and aims to improve regional connectivity while reducing reliance on foreign airlines. Enhancing transportation networks and investing in critical infrastructure projects such as roads, dams, and rural tracks are also on the agenda, with the goal of increasing connectivity and economic growth in the Sahel region. Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso are preparing to form a confederation, merging their infrastructures, armies, banks, and institutions to form a unified entity. This collaboration includes the development of a common food safety system that includes stocks, early warnings, and agricultural observatories. It represents a significant shift from separate nations to a single, more powerful country in the region. This move toward federation raises concerns about the potential consequences. Will this union strengthen these three countries? It's an intriguing step that indicates a united front, but the extent of their collective influence is unknown. Share your thoughts on their collaborative initiatives and what else they can accomplish together aside from introducing a single currency. Stay tuned for more videos delving into previously unknown aspects of black culture, civilization, and history. Subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell if you want to see more. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.